paper, mister? Welcome to my channel. Why read stories from the actual paper from 1894? Enhanced with pictures and videos to make it more interesting. This issue is July 28, 1894. The Walla Walla Garden City Gazette. A terrible accident. Monday evening, an accident occurred that resulted in the injury of Miss Camille Corliss, a young woman residing with their brother at the corner of 7th and Main Streets. Miss Corliss, with another lady, was riding in a hack on 2nd Street. When in front of Mrs. Stahl's brewery, the horses, which were being driven very fast, shied at something in front of the building, which caused the vehicle to lurch. Miss Corliss was thrown violently against the door of the cab, which forced it to open, and she fell to the ground, striking on her head and shoulders. The driver, apparently unable to stop the horses, drove about two blocks further on. In the meantime, the injured girl was picked up and carried to the saloon owned by Mrs. Stahl and laid on one of the billiard tables till physicians could arrive. Tardy in paying, the Union Pacific slow in settling with its men. Citizens have noticed an unusually large number of laboring men on the streets for several days. Many of them are destitute and live by begging from door to door. Many of these men have been employed on the Union Pacific. They were discharged at Umatilla and near points about a week ago. One gang came to Walla Walla to be paid. They have waited here since their arrival and are given no substantial satisfaction. They are asked to wait for the pay car, but they cannot wait on empty stomachs. Mrs. A. F. Perry, who lives on North 6th Street, made a complaint before Judge Upton Thursday that Agatha Bowers, a German woman, was insane. Doctors W. E. Russell and W. G. Albin found that the woman was perfectly sane. Chicken thieves have been getting in their work the last few days to the detriment of hen roosts in various parts of town. Padlocks seem to be no barrier to their entrance to the sleeping apartments of the fowls. Pat Dowling and Jack Rourke, two men well known in this county, had a set to at the corner of 9th and Chestnut Street Saturday night. The trouble was over some trivial matter. During the melee, two men living in the vicinity attempted to separate the scrappers with the result that a free-for-all took place that resembled a small riot. After breaking each other's faces for a while, the assembly dispersed, more or less used up. In camp at Wallawa, a letter from Charles E. Burroughs, Jr. Dear Editor, Today being Sunday and a day of rest, even with the campers, I thought a few lines in regard to camp life here would be acceptable. Our party consists of Mr. and Mrs. Taylor, Dr. and Mrs. Eli and daughter, Miss Taylor, Miss Wooden, Clayton Vandewater, and Guy Turner. We left the two Wallas at 3 a.m. Tuesday morning and had a very pleasant ride to the toll gate where we had dinner. From there, our ride was not so very pleasant as we were rather tired. Right here, I must mention a little fact that is rather significant. After leaving the tanks, two of the party rode ahead and as they left us, made the remark that they were going to elope. Of course, we thought nothing of that statement at the time, but when we reached the toll gate, the two were not there. We waited about half an hour and then began to think that they had kept to their word. We were just on the point of sending a search party out when they made their appearance singing. We arrived in Elgin about 8 o'clock Tuesday evening, a pretty tired outfit, 
but we had the irrepressible Guy Turner along and he kept up our drooping spirits. We left Elgin at 9 o'clock Wednesday morning, all of us in the best of spirits. In Malawa Canyon, the scenery is grand and every few steps you would hear an exclamation of rapture and delight from some of the ladies in the party. We drove slowly through the canyon and did not arrive at our camping ground, 26 miles from Elgin, till about 3 p.m. As soon as we pitched camp, I put my rod together to try my luck in the river and after an hour was fortunate to catch a mess of fish for supper. The best one I caught was 16 inches in length and weighed about two and one half pounds. Thursday morning the party struck camp and we were on the road by 5 o'clock. We arrived at the lake without any mishap at 2.30 p.m. The scenery as viewed from the foot of this sheet of water is some of the finest it has ever been my good fortune to see. Arriving at the head of the lake, we immediately pitched camp and were busy all the rest of the day getting ready for rainy weather as the sky was cloudy. Angling is very good and we had several messes of fish. The largest fish caught was only 20 inches in length. Guy Turner and Dr. Eli went out Friday afternoon and returned Saturday morning bringing a tame rabbit and a mushroom. According to Dr. Crop, he will add sea salt to his swimming pool so that bathers can, to all intents and purposes, enjoy a sea bath at Lakeside. Roland Smith, auditor of the WNCR Railway, has returned from a 10 days visit to Bingham Warm Springs. Henry Kelling, city clerk, left for Bingham Springs Tuesday, while he will stay for two weeks. Cruelty to Animals From what has been seen the past week by a Gazette reporter, there is an excellent opening here for Society for the Prevention of Cruelty to Animals. The Gazette hopes that some of our large-hearted, kindly disposed citizens will soon come to the front to organize one and teach some of the brutes in human form that cruelty to dumb animals shall not go unpunished. Last Sunday morning, two cows were fastened out to graze in two open lots on Dr. Newell Street. The heat on that day was intense and the poor animals were left there all day without shelter or water or nothing but withered grass to eat. The Gazette reporter noticed on Craig Street near Palouse, a boy had driven a team of horses attached to a wagon to a fence and then tied them. One horse shied at something and drew away as much as possible. The boy got in the wagon and again, taking a generous supply of the reins in his hands, began to belabor the animals with a black snake whip until it became frantic and jumped the traces. Household Remedies For a cough, boil an ounce of whole flaxseed in a pint of water, strain, add a little honey, the juice of two lemons, and an ounce of rock candy. Stir together and boil a few minutes. Drink hot. By disappointment. What a sad thing to be disappointed. Leisurely rocking myself in the hammock under the great spreading locust trees, my attention is attracted to a young maiden as she trips gaily down the street. I observe that she is tall and stately Fair of skin, her hair which she wears in a massive coil high on her head is a rich glossy black, 
Beneath her arm, she is carrying a violin. And I swing on. Scarcely had this dark-eyed damsel disappeared from view, I noticed the smiling visage of a gentleman weathering his way hither from the opposite direction. He too conveys under his wing an instrument case, which I presume to be that of a flute. And I swing on. I see him glance at his faultless attire and quicken his pace when he turns and steps proudly up to the entrance of the residence from whence the young lady emerged a few moments before. I cease swinging as I breathe the sadness in the atmosphere. Is Miss Blank in? Ah, Mr. Blank, I'm very sorry to inform you she is not, having been gone but a few moments. He does not wait to inquire to the direction of her going. All and enough, she is gone. Sadly, I observe the different view this young man has already taken in life. I smother my feelings behind a placid and innocent countenance and think, why, oh why, disappointment, and I swing on. <laughs>